let's talk about how pathogens evade the immune response. Uh, we're learning in this course all the different mechanisms by which the immune system recognizes and removes pathogens from the body, uh, but pathogens have evolved mechanisms to interfere with those recognition and removal techniques. And in fact, there are many pathogens that are very successful in their infection of humans and maintaining an infection, preventing the body from recognizing and clearing it. One large class of pathogens are herpes viruses. Herpes viruses are excellent at evading the immune response, which is why uh, most infections by herpes viruses uh, establish lifelong infections. It's almost impossible to get rid of these infections. These viruses stay with us forever. Um, and there are many classes of pathogens that do this. So I want to just to cover a few mechanisms by which pathogens, such as herpes viruses, evade the immune response. You can take an entire course on pathogen immune evasion. Now that you've learned about immunology, there are all sorts of mechanisms by which, path path by which pathogens evade our ability to recognize and remove them. Uh, herpes viruses uh, have many mechanisms. I just want to cover a few of them. So let's say uh, you're a herpes virus and you want to be a successful herpes virus. You want to infect and you don't want to get cleared by the, uh, by the uh, immune system. So we've learned about things such as compliment. Compliment's a great way to um, mark something as not belonging in the body and help get rid of it, right, through various mechanisms. And so here is a virus covered in C3Bs. Well, that's great because if uh, for the immune system, covering something in C3Bs will allow it to become opsonized. So there's a macrophage with its complement receptor CR1, and as we learned about, the CR1s bind C3Bs that are fixed to the surface of pathogens, and the macrophage will phagocytose and destroy the pathogen. Good for the immune system, bad for the pathogen. But uh, herpes viruses have evolved to make a protein that acts as a decoy. So it makes a protein called a, com vi called a virus complement receptor. So I've drawn on the C3Bs these red proteins. These red proteins look just like CR1 proteins, but they're made by the virus and they're not attached to anything. So if this macrophage comes by this area and looks to bind something with its CR1s, it's not going to bind anything. Why? Because the C3Bs are already covered, they're bound up by virus complement receptors. So the human complement receptor, CR1, that would result in phagocytosis of the pathogen. The virus complement receptors act as decoys, cover the C3Bs, and prevent recognition by cells such as macrophages. So that's one way, for example, for a pathogen to evade the immune response. Uh, let's talk about another way. Uh, during the immune response, the uh, many immune cells make cytokines. Cytokines are a way for, uh, to pro promote inflammation, for example. And if you're a pathogen, you don't want to promote inflammation. You want to hide. You want to do your best job to hide. So here's the macrophage releasing TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta. Um, so those are cytokines, and they're going to go and bind their receptors on the surface of cells, such as endothelial cells, and that'll result in uh, inflammation in this uh, infected site. So there's the TNF, TNF alpha receptor, which would bind TNF alpha, and there's the IL-1 beta receptor that would bind IL-1 beta. But if you're a herpes virus, you want to stop this. So what do you do? You have a protein that looks just like cytokine receptors, but it's made by the virus and it's used to bind the, and soak up the cytokines so that the cytokines don't actually bind to their real human receptors on the human cells. So viruses like to make these, these decoy receptors that will bind things and they will inhibit the real binding of the cytokine to its cytokine receptor. So these are virus-encoded soluble cytokine receptors. So herpes viruses, many different, many of the different herpes viruses make these soluble cytokine receptors, and their function is to bind cytokines and prevent them from the cytokines from binding to their real and true receptors on the surface of human cells. So this is some examples 
of how uh, the immune, uh, how pathogens interfere with the innate immune response. And we'll talk more about other mechanisms when we talk about uh, the humoral immune response and the cell-mediated immune response.